So I get a lot of questions all to do with cryptocurrency right now and I understand why it's definitely a hot topic within the investing world and I think as everyday investors if you're seasoned using index funds and commodities and individual companies perhaps now you've got an interest in actually buying into crypto as well. You're seeing a bit of the hype and wondering could this be part of your portfolio as well. Now before we start remember cryptocurrency is highly volatile. One day it can be up 20% and then drop down by 50% so by all means do not buy buy crypto unless you fully understand how risky it is. But today's video, I'm going to talk you through how to set up the eToro software wallet app. This is another option for us actually storing the Bitcoin or your cryptocurrency. Super important to understand and I hope it's useful for you if you're starting out on your cryptocurrency journey. Hi there, welcome back to the Mama Fur Fur channel. My name is Jennifer. So we're talking about today cryptocurrency in particular, and I want to give you a tutorial about how to actually set up a software wallet for your cryptocurrency if you're using eToro. It's a platform I've been using for a number of years now, as you know. Every month, actually, my husband Matt and I have a competition using it with a small portion, a little fun money portion portfolio where you can follow every month to see how we're doing against each other. And obviously, you can actually even follow my portfolio there. So if you're on eToro already, go to at Mama Furfer and you'll see what I'm investing in and what I'm doing with our portfolio, a little tiny little portfolio that I've created. So I know a number of you are using eToro obviously for cryptocurrency like I am okay if we go into my portfolio right now you will see that I've got Bitcoin I've also got Ethereum at the moment and so the question comes about is you know is that good enough for security and I want to really stress this first of all crypto is highly volatile I've touched upon that already so please make sure if you're going to invest in cryptocurrency Bitcoin Ethereum whatever you understand that it could rise very quickly and drop very quickly in price. It's not the same as index funds or trackers. This is definitely about five, eight percent of our portfolio is in crypto because it's highly risky and I'm okay with potentially losing all our money in it. And one of the things that's really important to understand with cryptocurrency is it's different from having money in the bank, okay? The security side of it is kind of down to us a little bit. Website platforms like eToro and Coinbase, who I personally use for my cryptocurrency they are termed as exchanges their job is to allow you the option to buy portions of that currency but they don't protect it for you they're only protected for their own assets so in terms of what I hold of course I have you know I'm buying out the asset you can also have CFDs with crypto but we won't cover that in this video but essentially the exchanges job is not to protect my currency if we don't then have a way of actually using that currency and taking it off the exchange we can't guarantee that it's safe and a thing to understand with crypto is there's a term that they say you know if you don't own the keys to it it's not your crypto so when we leave it on the exchange we're leaving the keys the security up to that platform to manage now of course there is some kind of coverage there there's regulations and things like that but that's more to do with that company managing their assets rather than us personally it's not covered by the same financial institution that we have with cash or investments. We don't have the same financial compensation over platforms when it's to do with cryptocurrency. So we have to manage the security element. And one way you do that is by then moving it on to wallets. Two types of wallets. We have hardware wallets and software wallets. A hardware wallet, and I'm gonna have this in a future video that you're gonna see as well. Hardware wallets just like this. This is a Trezor hardware wallet where actually I'm then giving myself extra security. I'm taking it off the exchange and this is kind of like having a physical purse with my money. And what we have with this is I have the keys, okay? So this is like my personal, and it's a 20 word barcode, if you like, that makes sure only I can get access to this hardware purse or wallet okay with a software wallet which is what I'm going to show you with eToro again we're taking it off the actual exchange but what we're doing then is we've got it on our phone okay and there is a chance why this is slightly better hardware wallet is because this can come with me and if I lose that 
these keys, this bit of paper, allows me to reclaim the money, the Bitcoin, the crypto, that's whatever's on that, I can then get access. So I can set up another Trezor or another different device and get my Bitcoin or crypto back. With software, it's on my wallet, yes, and it's linked to my account, but potentially somebody could get into my phone. Somebody could you know, know my passcode and then send and receive Bitcoin or crypto without me realizing. So software wallets are kind of the step down from the exchange hardware wallets are then a step further where you're actually a little bit more control and a bit more secure. Now to have an eToro wallet on your phone you always have to have a verified account with eToro so in the same way before you can actually even buy cryptocurrency or any assets on their exchange you have to give usually your residential ID you have to prove your identification so I'm going to assume you have a verified account with eToro. You then go ahead and simply download it off the app store as I'm doing right here you download it you put in all your details and then a couple of different screens where it talks you through why you'll be using it. So this is so that you can actually buy and send Bitcoin or crypto, whatever you're using, and keep it safe as well to some degree. So when you actually put it on your phone, you see you put in your username, you put in your password, you've got to agree to their term and conditions, and then obviously there's a full document they can go through and read. I recommend you absolutely do that before you tick OK. But going back to the app now, click on agree once you've read those terms and conditions, and then you can actually set up wallets. Now the great thing is it's a really simple process. Hit the plus, and they have a couple of options. We've got Bitcoin, we've got Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash and Stellar at the moment. So a couple of the main options of crypto that you'd be buying and selling things in. Now it's important to understand that once you actually set that up on your phone, you then have to transfer it from the exchange to your wallet. Now the wallet is using your username and password of eToro so it knows that they're linked. So that way it's got your keys on it. And that's why we say, you know, hardware is that little step further because again, these are randomly generated passwords. It's a big long list that you have to keep safe and secure. Nobody's gonna get into this without my permission. With software, potentially, somebody could actually get on my phone and use it. Although it's probably highly unlikely, but you can see there's a little bit less bad barrier of entry for security compared to hardware. So now that we have our wallet set up on our phone, we're adding in that level of security, I get that. But there's another reason why people have wallets it's so that you can spend your money. Think about this in the same way of using bank, okay? When the bank has your money, you need a debit card or you need to take out cash. You need to do something with the money to order to then use it. It's the same with a wallet, a crypto wallet. It's in the exchange, yes, but you need to then make it personal that you can actually use it. And that's what a wallet is. You're simply downloading, you're moving that crypto so that then you can either send it or buy stuff with it. And also, of course, you can receive money as well. Just in the same way somebody gives you cash into your wallet, it's the same principle again. So now we're at the stage where we've set up our software wallet on our phone and we want to move our crypto that's sitting in our portfolio in eToro to that wallet. Now, step back from that, not only have we got a verified account, there's also only a couple of permitted ways of how you funded your eToro account that then bought the cryptocurrency. Now, you're best to go on the eToro website and check them out, but it tends to be things that you've had to have used a debit card or bank transfer to put the funds in okay so that's highly important as well I believe it's to do with actually regulations about money laundering and things like that they're making sure you have had the money first that then bought the crypto that then go into your wallet they're making sure all the steps for you using their tools are in place to make sure there's nothing dodgy going on and they can verify how you actually transferred the money so we've downloaded it straight to our phone you saw how easy that was next let's talk about the process of actually transferring from your eToro account to your wallet. So what I would simply do is, and I say this is my portfolio, you can see I'm not going to make the transfer because I want it to stay here and my amounts are a little bit too small to actually transfer over, but I'll talk to you in that in a minute. So any trade that you have with the currency, so I've gone into Bitcoin, what you would do then is actually go into that currency and then say that you want to transfer. So did you see that come up right now? Now mine says it's not available to do because you'd actually have a little click link there that would say transfer to wallet, 
you would go ahead and that would be it sent, okay? I don't have enough, so you have to have it, as you can see, it pops up with the minimum amounts. You have to have certain amounts of crypto before it will then allow you to transfer it onto your wallet. So keep that in mind. And I'm gonna show you that on their current terms and conditions right now. Some of the fees and the minimum amounts that apply as I make this video. But it really is as simple as that. You would go into one of your trades, you would then click on that transfer to wallet and it would be done. A couple of things to be mindful of before I talk you through some of the minimum requirements are there will be charges and fees depending on what you're sending over. It'll talk you through that as well on the website before you transfer over. And it can take up to one to two days to then appear in your wallet. Now again, that's all to do with actually waiting in the queue for the transfer to happen and for some of their checks. So don't be shocked if you hit that button and it takes you about 24 hours to get it into your wallet. That's really quite normal. Normal. So let me go through some of the fees and charges. Now, depending on what you're actually choosing, and I'm in the crypto, you will see there's obviously different fees for ownership of it, cost of buying crypto, and this is the transfer fees, okay? So there it gives you all the fee breakdown depending on what crypto you're using. Ethereum is probably another really common one you might be transferring over, and Litecoin. So these are the minimums that you can actually then put on your wallet and withdraw, okay? I would also say, no Notice that the fees are parts of that cryptocurrency, okay? So every day that fee will change potentially and also the minimum withdrawal amounts that you can move over. So one day, you know, that percentage of Bitcoin might be some value and the next day it might have gone up or might have gone down. So be aware of that as well. And the same with the fees. They're obviously going to fluctuate based on when you're doing it, the exact day and the exact price of Bitcoin or your cryptocurrency. So I always go back to this page and check what are my fees and what's the minimum amounts I have to transfer over. But once it's there, of course, you can then send it, you can buy stuff with it using your wallet and you can also receive as well. So in a similar place, let me go into my Ethereum, just show you what I mean. So I click on my trade, you would then actually click on it and you would again see that transfer button. You'd hit that and then that would be you. I don't have the minimum amount of Ethereum to make the transfer, but you get the principle and it is a matter of one to two days at the most and then you would see it in your wallet it just simply appears. So the final thing that I want to touch upon, now that I've shown you how to set up the software app on your phone and actually the process for transferring over, let's talk about how safe this is. So I mentioned obviously that I believe that hardware and pretty much standard that everyone does agree, hardware wallets are for sure the safest way to have your cryptocurrency. This is something then that I can take between when I'm doing my transfers. I've got the keys, I have that, whereas the software then has the keys on board. It actually uses my user information to then allow someone access to it. So in theory, somebody needs my phone or even if they could just get my username and password, they could get my cryptocurrency that's on this wallet. This actually requires that little bit step up and it's also got a pin code on it as well. So not only is my numbers and my words important, there's a whole host of combination that you have to have. Why I think it is super important though to think about moving money, any kind of crypto onto a wallet in some form is because otherwise you're relying on the exchange managing your crypto security. And particularly if you're starting to see your crypto that you maybe bought last year or the past six months, you can see it ramping up in value. It is certainly something you need to be aware of. If there's large amounts of crypto on the exchange, you have to make sure you're managing that for your own security. If it's smaller amounts that you're managing at the moment, you might not see what's the fuss, you know, if it's only maybe 10 or 50 pounds worth. But as we certainly, if it grows over time, which I have no doubt it will do, that could be large amounts of money that you need to make sure you're looking after. So for me right now, I like the combination of having some money on a software app for those quick transfers, the quick buy and actually receives that I want to do, plus the added bonus of my larger amounts on hardware wallets. And I talk you through this, I show you this actually using Coinbase, how I transferred it over. That's gonna be on a future video that you can check out. And the last point I really want to make is think of this, a software app as being as if it's your purse in your bag or your wallet. If somebody gets a hold of this, they have access to your crypto. This makes it a little bit harder to get that access. They'd have to guess your password or get access to it in some way. So that's not always the easiest thing to do, 
but this is just the same though as a wallet in your purse if you lose it or you lose access to it with your username password whatever it's going to be a little bit harder then to get back your money so keep that in mind think about how you're managing your cryptocurrency it's a real area that we have to be conscious of particularly if it is in your portfolio and also you're optimistic about what it could do in the future you don't want to be leaving huge amounts of money on the exchange where potentially as we've seen in the past some of these exchanges have been under attack and hopefully that won't happen to where we're using but you can see you're at least taking the steps to make sure you're managing it and I do this maybe every month or so I'll move crypto off of it I'll put my amounts depending on what I feel you can do the same if that feels right for you too now if you are interested in using eToro for your cryptocurrency the wallet or even Coinbase as well I've got links down below that you can use my referral that takes you to them Coinbase actually give you a little crypto for free if you want to set up your account with a certain amount and you can also do little tasks and get crypto eToro I love because I'm using it as part of our portfolio there's so much choice there and also it's super easy to actually see my values and manage an entire portfolio there this is our experimental portfolio that's in eToro as you know but at least it allows you to also see what I'm doing so do check me out on eToro at Mama Furfur if you want to see how my cryptocurrency is doing and how I'm managing it well I hope today's video has been really useful for you if you have enjoyed it why not check out this video right here on a similar topic and also I'd love you to hit subscribe and follow my channel we cover everything about personal finance investing and success mindset I'd love to have you as a regular viewer so thank you so much for watching today I'll speak to you very soon